Welcome to Blood and Steel. Here is today's lesson, Dagger Here 101. Let's start with the basics. How to play. Dagger here is normally described, at least to me, as a combat simulation sport. So it mostly focuses on the combat aspect. There is a little bit of like role play, a little bit of fantasy. There's some fantasy elements, but most of the focus is on fighting. Now how the fighting works is generally pretty simple. First rule about dagger here is each shot has to have sufficient force. Now, sufficient force means it is sufficient to take the hit based on the person receiving the hit. When someone throws a shot or strikes someone else, it is not on the person attacking to call their hit. It is on the person receiving to say, that was a solid strike, I will take that hit. Oh, good shot. <laughs> this game is an honor sport. So it means that it is on your own honor to call your own shots. Now, when someone is hit, depending on where they're hit, different things happen. So, if someone is struck on the leg and the hit is deemed as good, they'll usually yell leg or they'll say something like good hit or they'll acknowledge the fact that the hit was struck, they'll do some kind of acknowledgement. Yeah, you got it. And they will then go down on that knee that was hit, or the knee of the leg that was hit. The other leg that is not hit is kept knee up in some way, so the knee is not touching the ground. That is then considered the valid leg left to be hit. So if you want to hit another body part and you strike the leg that has the knee touching the ground, it is considered a dead leg and does not count. As for arms, the rule is generally the same. If an arm is hit, and the hit is considered valid by the receiving party, whatever is in the arm is dropped, and the arm is basically considered not there anymore, or useless, or you know, un unusable. Some people put their arms behind their backs, some people put their arms close to their body. Regardless, the arm is now considered dead. If I get hit in the arm, and I have a two-handed weapon, I can now only use that two-handed weapon with one single hand, the hand that did not get hit. Any two combinations of limb hits, whether it be an arm and an arm, an arm and a leg, both legs, results in death. So if I get hit in the leg, and then I get hit in the arm, I am dead. The same rule applies to any torso shot at any point. If I get hit in the torso, I am dead, immediately whether or not I have a limb lost or not. Anything that is physically handled, melee weapons, so person to person, I am swinging, I am stabbing, clubbing, baby seals, uh, it cannot hit the head or neck area. So most people go by the collarbone. That is a legal strike area from that down. So collarbone up, you don't hit. There are several different types of weapons in the game. So there's blue, there's red, there's green, there's yellow, there's gray, and this is where it can get a little complicated with how the color association goes. A blue weapon is the most simple. It is your standard one-handed swung sword. So this right here is your standard swung sword. It is a reasonable length for me to hold with one hand. It is not too big, I don't have to hold it with two hands, it's not very bulky. So, this is considered a blue weapon. This is also considered a blue weapon. This is a small, tiny dagger. Once again, I wield it with one hand normally. It's just a small, light, striking weapon. The most important part about a blue weapon is that it is striking or slashing. So, bats, clubs, maces, flails, swords, axes. The next weapon is called a red weapon. Now this is a red weapon. As you can, I'm sure, immediately tell, 
it is considerably larger than the regular blue sword I have. This is your minimum red. So it's called a min red because it is the minimum requirements of weight and length to be considered a red weapon. A red weapon is different from a blue weapon for one or two reasons that stem off of one big difference, and that is the fact that you wield this normally with two hands. When wielded with two hands, it gets certain bonuses. When wielded with one hand, despite its length and its weight, it is still considered a single blue sword. So these two right here, when wielded with one hand each, will do the same exact thing. When wielded with two hands, however, the red becomes a pretty formidable weapon. Main usage for the red is that it can break shields in the game. So the game mechanic is that two solid strikes on a shield, nothing glancing, nothing sliding, two solid strikes on a shield will consider that shield broken. A lot of people love using the reds. They're very good for skirmishing, they're very good for line defense, they're generally, from what I found, a pretty good all-around weapon. The next weapons I'm going to talk about are green weapons. This is where it can get a little complicated because a weapon that is a green weapon can also be other color types. So green is standard for one action, one action only, stabbing. So this right here is a spear. It's about six and a half feet and as you can see, it is padded at the front. I'm not going to swing at anyone with this, I'm going to stab with it. The fact that it's padded this way is simply for courtesy, just in case movements happen and I accidentally wing someone with this part here, swinging it. It's to make sure that no one accidentally gets hurt. Other weapons will have stabbing tips on them that still can be used for other things. So this weapon right here has a nice squishy tip for stabbing. So I can stab with it, I can slash with it, I can do both. So it is considered a blue-green, but its main denomination is blue. Green weapons are able to be blue-green, red-green, uh, yellow-green even, in fact, but also just simply green themselves. It, it makes more sense when in the game, when facing these weapons down, you see a spear, you know, oh, that is going to stab me. So you're not thinking, oh, that's a green weapon, it's doing all these different things, it can, you know, or this is a blue-green weapon, it can do these different things. You're thinking, this is a knife, this is a sword, that's a spear, those things are pretty simple on what they can do. Normally, they will be tagged with their color-coded tape. So let's say I built a blue, but the stabbing tip either didn't pass weapons check, or I didn't build a stabbing tip at all. They would mark this as blue. However, with this weapon, since I have the stabbing tip, since, as far as I know, it passed last time, they would mark it as a blue-green. So they put blue and green tape right on the pommel, or on the handle, or wherever, so that when someone, if someone accidentally picked it up in the battle and they were short on a weapon, they needed to use something quickly, they could look down, they could see, oh, I can slash with this, oh, but I can't stab, there's no green tape, or I can slash and stab with this weapon safely. It becomes more common sense than rules in your head when you're on the field. Now, the last weapon I'm going to talk about in depth are going to be yellow weapons. Now, yellow weapons include javelins and arrows. They're projectiles. They are, you know, weapons that are thrown or shot through the air in order to kill. Nice soft head, you know, squishy. It gives you a bit of a slap, but it's not going to hurt you. So because of that, and because of its lightness and, you know, general dedication to safety, these are actually one of the only weapons on the field that can strike the head. So now we're going to talk about one of the coolest parts of the game, armor. Armor is generally pretty useful in Dagger here considering it gives you one extra point of health on any limb that it covers. If I have this on my arm, that means that whenever someone swings their sword at me, if they hit me right in this bracer, instead of taking my arm, that's a point. What if they hit me here? Well, the armor's not really covering there, so it doesn't matter. 
However, if I had a nice full arm setup, you know, pauldrons, nice elbow protection, then the forearm and wrist protection, and they hit me, you know, in anywhere that had armor on it, I can keep going. My arm is fine. If they hit me here, I still have the rest of the armor on, you know, my pauldrons, my elbow, they hit me here, and then they hit me here. These separate armor pieces do not count separately for condition. So once I'm hit in the arm armor, all of my arm armor is gone. Same with the leg. If I have greaves and I get hit in the ankle, the greaves protect me. However, if I get hit in the thigh and I have any kind of thigh protection, it doesn't matter. That armor has been destroyed. There is no more armor left in that area. Now there are a couple ways to get around the uh, extra point. One is by using a red weapon. So as I explained earlier, red weapons, when swung with two firm hands, so nothing sliding, you know, two firm hands on the sword, when swung, ignore armor. So if I have a nice breastplate, or I have forearm armor, and a red two-handed hits me right here, doesn't matter. My arm is still gone. The armor does not protect against two-handed swings with a red. On the idea of two-handed, Two-handed stabs also go through armor. So if I have some chainmail and someone has a dagger, they could go one, two, so one for the armor, one for the torso and kill me, or they could put two hands on the weapon and yell double green. So that means two hands firm on green stab, which means it goes through armor. So if the shot connects well, so double green, and it gets a good stab, it ignores my armor, so whatever chainmail I'm wearing doesn't matter. So instead of going one, two, or one, two, double green, one solid shot, I'm dead. Helmets are another very, very useful piece of armor. So, as we know, yellow weapons and gray or white weapons can hit the head. So, legally, an arrow can hit you in the face and kill you. Now, if I'm wearing a helmet, it's a lot harder for an arrow to get me when I'm wearing this. So, my face is protected, my head is protected, and all the arrows coming in will most likely deflect off. An arrow might not be able to get me in the face unless it's here, maybe here, like here here, stuff like there, but anywhere else, all of this, all the crown, top of the head, back of the head, all protected by the helmet. So the helmet completely negates any projectile weapons, so javelins, rocks, arrows, anything that would hit me in the head, completely negated as long as it hits the helmet instead of my face. There is no points on this, an arrow doesn't hit it and you yell point, an arrow and a javelin and whatever projectiles bounce off this, do not limit its constitution. It can continue going for the entire battle. So you can go an entire battle and have an arrow hit you every single second of the battle. And as long as it hits the helmet only, you are fine. Your helmet's fine, it doesn't compromise it. So helmets are incredibly, incredibly useful. My favorite example, when in battle, I kept getting hit by arrows. So I asked my friend, oh, can I borrow your helmet? I put the helmet on, and immediately the arrows just stopped. I saw no arrows coming my way the entire game. It was incredible what putting one piece of metal on your head can do to completely dissuade anyone from shooting an arrow at you. So, very useful.